and welcome to the COVID-19 daily update for today, April 27, 2021. As usual, we have with us the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony. Dr. Anthony, thank you for making the time out to speak to us today. Let's get right into it. Uh, since the government has announced uh, vaccinations for persons 18 years and older, we have seen an eagerness from the younger population. Uh, can you tell us what has been the response from this population? And do you think the younger folks are responding better uh, than the older folks? Well, that's a very interesting question. Of course, once we lower the age to 18 and above, we saw an influx of people wanting to get vaccine. And so the first week, we had a lot of people coming forward. But that has slowed a little bit now. Um, we are working and we are encouraging more people to come out. Uh, we have currently more than 100 different fixed sites around the country, and we have published those so that people can know where to go. In some areas, uh, our health staff has extended the hours of work, so rather than closing off at 3 o'clock, they have now extended that to 6 o'clock so that more people who are coming off of work uh, would be able to get access to those vaccination sites. And in, in addition to that, what we have done is to ensure that apart from fixed sites, if they are uh, NGOs or faith-based organization that want to work with us and to, do, and to do special outreaches, that we have been doing so. Um, uh, we have worked with a number of them and the response has been generally good because they have been able to mobilize those communities and bring people out to the vaccination center. So I would say that um, the response so far has been good. Um, we are now about 24, 25% of our adult population have been covered with first dose of vaccination, but we want that to even be better. So we are hoping that we can get more people coming out um, so that we can, by the end of the week, probably be closer to about 50% of our population. So we continue to work and we encourage all age groups uh, to really come out and to get their vaccines, not just the younger people, but all age groups. We know that older people are more, more vulnerable and so we have spent a lot of time encouraging older people to come out. Based on our uh, mortality statistics, uh, we have seen that the majority of people who have died so far have been older persons. And we know that this vaccine, once you take it, it protects you uh, from dying from COVID. And that's why we are encouraging older people especially to come out and get the vaccine. But we want everybody to really, those who are 18 years and above, to really come out and get the vaccine. Because if you get the vaccine, it protects you. It would help. Once you are immunized, you are protecting your family. And by extension, we are protecting the communities in which we live. I know you mentioned a percentage, but uh, can you translate that into numbers for us? For how many persons have been vaccinated so far? We have approximately 124,000 or so persons who have been vaccinated with the first dose. And we have another uh, 2,800 that would have received their second dose, which means that they are now fully immunized. Okay, great. Uh, you had mentioned earlier this month that Guyana is due for additional doses of the AstraZeneca vaccines by May. Can you provide an update on this for us? Well, COVAX has informed us that they are going to send us additional doses of AstraZeneca. Uh, we don't have uh, specific data yet, but we are expecting 38,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, hopefully we get that before uh, the end of May and once we get that we'll utilize it uh, to make sure that people get their vaccines. Uh, one thing we have seen uh, over the past few months uh, is a lot of Guyanese have been questioning whether they should get the vaccine or not. Is it safe for me to take it or not? Uh, recently, uh, Pfizer announced that the vaccine uh, is still in your system for about six months or so. 
Can you say with this uh, information coming out, uh, can Guyanese be assured that the vaccines they are taken is safe? It's safe for them to go and take. Uh, they can be assured that you know they're going to be okay once they take it. Is there any additional new information? All the vaccines that we have in Guyana are very safe. Uh, these vaccines, we, we have three that we are working with, AstraZeneca, Sinopharm, and the Sputnik V. These vaccines have gone through a process of clinical trials. So they've been three different types of clinical trials, and they've all been found to be efficacious and safe. And then all of these vaccines have now been used around the world um, in many, many countries. Millions of people have received these vaccines and it has been proven to be safe. So there's nothing that one should be worried about um, that should prevent you from coming to get the vaccines. The WHO would have review, uh, reviewed the data and they have concluded in the case of AstraZeneca that the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the risk and therefore they're urging people to get vaccinated. The Sinopharm vaccine is going to be at the WHO on the 29th, uh, where the expert uh, group uh, would be looking at that particular vaccine and more than likely they would give approval, um, a WHO approval. So these vaccines have gone through very rigorous approval process and they're safe for everyone. So I don't see why people should hesitate to get it. I personally took my vaccine and um, I'm pretty okay. They, nothing, I didn't get any side effects. Some people sometimes are hesitant because they're fearful of side effects. Different people would react differently. Uh, some people might get a little bit of fever sore arm, but these are common things that you'll get with vaccines. But after a 24-hour period, you'll be fine. So I urge everyone to make sure they get their vaccine and it's safe to do so. Uh, you mentioned government wants to ramp, ramp up its vaccination um, processes across the country. But uh, as you ramp up that, there may be some persons who are bedridden and can't leave their homes uh, to come out and get their vaccines. Has the Ministry of Health thought about this and put any measures in place to ensure that these persons are reached and vaccinated? So what we're trying to do is to identify those persons who are bedridden or who are termed as shut-ins. Um, once we know the, the names of the person, the addresses of the person, then we'll be able to put up a special team that can go to the person's home and do the vaccination. But we need to identify these people. Um, I have said uh, before that once we get those names, the respective uh, regional health offices for those regions would be able to make those arrangements so that we can visit the persons at home and to immunize them at home. So that's the process that we currently have and um, I hope that people can send us those names so that we can start that process as well. Have you been able though so far to reach any of those persons and if so how many? I don't have the stats how many because we are doing this across the region. The instructions have been out to the different regional health offices. So they have been um, in their own way arranging for um, these visits and immunizing those persons who are at home. Okay. Uh, I know the Ministry of Health has taken a decision recently uh, to have COVID-19 testing sites opened over the weekends. Can you state what uh, some of these sites are going to be and the opening hours? Well, simply we, we have had um, in Region 4, we have had a testing site at Paradise and another one at Herstelling. And uh, while they work during the day, uh, for whatever reason, the staff was closing them on the weekends. So we have rectified that. So these two sites in Region 4 are now open uh, throughout the week, meaning on Saturdays and Sundays. And they're working always basically from 8 to 4. So um, persons who need to get a test can go there and get their test done. Okay.
Okay. Uh, there have been some frequently asked questions as persons go and take their vaccines. And one of those has been, uh, if I take the COVID vaccine, how long must I wait to take another vaccine if I need it? Uh, can you say uh, what, how long someone should wait if they took the COVID vaccine? If you take the COVID vaccine, uh, you probably would need to wait about a month or so before you take some other vaccines. Vaccines work on the, the basis that you're being injected with an antigen um, that would not cause disease, but would cause your body, your immune system to react to produce antibodies. So if you take a vaccine, uh, it sometimes takes between 7 to 21 days for your immune system to properly react uh, to produce antibodies. Uh, you don't necessarily want to, um, to, to get a clear understanding of maybe side effects and reactions and so forth from a particular vaccine. You will need some time period. And that's why it's advisable if you're using two different vaccines to probably have that time interval. Uh, on the other hand, there are vaccines where you can give them in combination. So you can give several antigens together. And we have been doing some of that for children where you, you do these combined uh, types of vaccines. But if people must get a second vaccine after you would have received the COVID, it is better that you do so after you probably completed uh, your two doses. On that same note, uh, your ministry is also running the Filaria campaign, even as it rolls out to the vaccination. Um, can you say uh, if someone can take the Filaria pills at the same time they're take, taking the COVID vaccine, or must they wait a specified period before they do so? Well, right now we have completed the Filaria exercise, so um, I don't think people would have the challenges now of taking one or the other. Uh, we, we concluded the Filaria program uh, about a month ago, where we were, we were doing mass distribution of, of pills. Um, so that has been concluded. We are now in the phase where we are doing the assessment to see the percentages and so by region. But so far, the uptake of those pills have been quite good. Um, so right now, there is no need uh, to worry about filaria tablets and uh, vaccines. But when we, we were doing the two programs um, together, we had a rule that basically stated if you got your vaccine, at least wait seven days before uh, you take the tablets. And that was because, again, if you if you want to observe for side effects, you want to know what really the person was reacting to. And if you had filaria tablets, maybe you're reacting to those tablets, or if you had the vaccine. So that's why we were differentiating. And at least put some a few days in between the two to be able to see whether that person develops any reaction or not. Is it advisable, uh, do you think, uh, for someone to self-medicate or say take paracetamol or anything like that before they go to take the COVID vaccine? Is, is it right? Again, um, we don't know how a person might react to the vaccine. As I said before, I did not get any fever or, or anything. So had I taken a paracetamol before I took the vaccine, it really would have been um, not necessary for me to do so. So what is advisable is to take the vaccine, and depending on how you react, if you get a bit of fever or something, then you can take the paracetamol. Um, so that it depends on the individual, your reaction, right? So take the vaccine first. If there's any reaction, like fever or a little bit of pain, then you can take the, the tablet. Okay. And can someone with a condition, say anemia or sickle cell, can they take the COVID vaccine? Is it safe for them to do so? Yeah, there's no, um, there's no reason why they shouldn't. Uh, 
while anemia means that you have low blood count, uh, red, red blood count, um, there's no reason why you shouldn't take the vaccine. The vaccine, again, uh, would work to stimulate your immune system so that you produce antibodies, which would fight off the virus if you get exposed. And similarly, for somebody with sickle cell, uh, sickle cell is where the red blood cells under reduced oxygen would uh, form the shape of a sickle. Uh, again, that too, um, there's no contraindication why you should, shouldn't take the vaccine. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Anthony. But, but before we go, is there any last words you have uh, for the Guyanese population, especially as we continue to battle through the pandemic? Well, I hope it's not the last words, but <laughs> um, I, I would say that we need people to really um, go out and get their vaccines. We know that these vaccines work. Uh, we know it can reduce the spread of infection. We know that if somebody is infected and you have been vaccinated, then you might get the milder form of the disease. And in most cases, um, and from the studies that we have seen, these vaccines prevent deaths. So it's better to be um, to make sure that you vaccinate yourself and, um, and, and protect yourself and your family. So I encourage everyone that you know to get the vaccine. We are on the right track. We have already achieved about 24% uh, of our population receiving the vaccine. And once we continue at this rate uh, very soon, we would be able to achieve herd immunity. But for us to get there, it would mean that each one of us must um, encourage others to take the vaccine. And we must get, get it ourselves so that we can achieve that number. So I just want to encourage everyone to get your vaccine. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Anthony. That has been your COVID update for today, April 27, 2021. Thank you for joining us. I am Gomati Gangadin saying goodbye.